Hello there newcomers and welcome back to our subscribers. This is Mohamed Maliki. In this video we will talk about a really old but not very popular trick that allows us to draw across browser CSS errors. The errors we are talking about are those that sometimes appear in primary action buttons like download or buy. They are also often used when creating style drop-down menus and other custom UI elements. With that in mind, we have a simple topic. Let's jump into code. We will try to draw this large right facing arrow using a simple span, couple CSS crosses, arrow and right, and bunch CSS styles. In order to do this, I will come to an empty one, having this pen in it, and start styling. So for now, let's say we won't show this span for any arrow. Have some styles. In order to see the span, I say background orange. Since it's empty, we will need to set some styles to make it show up. So for now, I'll say width 100 pixel, height 100 pixel as well. And because this is an um, inline element, it doesn't always take the width and height as desired, so in order to fix this, I'll convert it to an inline block element. And I will reset the padding and the margin, just in case. To show what the trick is all about, I'll add a border of 25 pixel solid by default take the default border color text which is black and continuing to show what this trick is about i'll try to change the color of each side in this border so let's do that for the right side i will give it blue color i'm just modifying the color not every and uh, not the width, not the style. And for the left, for border left color, let's say red. And for the bottom, I will give it, let's say, green. Okay. You already start. To see what this is about, you see these uh, lines coming when um, two edges or two borders intersect. What would happen if our span was a little smaller? Let's see. Try to make it 50 at first and then try to make it 10 well what if it was 0 now you must be seeing the trick already we uh, we have now four triangles and zero in fact is just a triangle so what what we really want now is to get rid of all of them and leave only one, which is very simple. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, all browsers allow you to set a border with a transparent color. So this is what I'm going to do. Transparent. And then I'm going to take everything out. like this except the right one since we still have the orange background we convert that to transparent as well and now you see when I only left the right border it looks like a left arrow and this is exactly the trick 
whenever you want to have an arrow in a certain direction, you have all the borders in all directions to be transparent except the opposite direction. So in order to change this to look like what we wanted, I will say actually I want the left color to be blue. And to make it look like our example here, I'll say let's have it teal instead. However, allow me to return the borders to, to show you something very important. If we do gray, or maybe something light like yellow, you notice that we still are taking more width than we really wanted. Let's fix that and clean our code. I'll go here and say spam dot arrow dot right. Note that you cannot use um, two classes together in the same part of the selector in i6, but hopefully um, in 2013 you don't exactly worry much about i6, and if you do, you can rename it to something like arrow right and change it in here. Then we will move the left part because it's specific to having a right arrow in here and since we want to remove this part remember what part this was coming from it was actually coming from um, the right border so in order to take it off it should be as easy as setting the right border width to zero like this and yes, it did work. Then we have a look at our sample. We can realize that our arrow in here is a bit larger. So let's try and make it larger here. We'll increase the border size to 50. And Although it may be the same height, but it's not the same width. So I'll go here and set the border left width to something larger, let's say 100. And now as we take the global color away, you can see that we have pretty much the same arrow. So now let's look at another example here that I have. You can see here I'm using all kinds of arrows and it's pretty much the same here I have resets for width and height and padding and margin setting display display to inline plug setting a default transparent uh, border with a particular width here I'm using EMs instead of a specific dimension and then for each of them I set a color a height or like size and I reset the opposite direction it's a little bit funny because for example to set up the arrow up which sounds like it should be depending on uh, like setting a border top. What I'm really enabling is the border bottom in here. And what I'm completely disabling is the border top. You see the same way goes for the right one. Enabling the left bottom. Uh, sorry, the left border. And disabling the right border. Same here to enable the arrow that looks at the left. I enable the right border and I completely disable the left border, not, not even just to rely on it being transparent. And same for that. So far, everything we talked about was cross processor compatible. We expected to work starting from i7 and with a Bit modification can be working for i6 as well. 
Let's explain some things that most car browsers will support, but starting from um, i8, and of course Firefox and Chrome and such are all fine. We will try to draw a drop down box like. So I'll take all of these. And turn this into a div because a drop down is probably not exactly a paragraph, just a semantic, nothing special to the styling. Then I'll give it a class of drop down. We'll not handle the thing about uh, like showing sub content and stuff like that, we'll just show the bottom arrow for um, the, our drop down. So we'll come here and say Dot drop down and we'll have a bit of real border not related to our trick. Let's say one pixel solid and then maybe something like this and a bit of padding. Let's say one pixel to a pixel. And it also needs to be this um, display line block, so the width is set automatically. But this time, I want to make it completely CSS. So I'll take the span out, and we should be able to write our drop down somehow. Uh, sorry, our drop down arrow somehow. In CSS there's something that's called pseudo elements. These are elements that are added by CSS and are only used for styling. You can't even access them from um, JavaScript or anything. Since they don't exist in the rich at all, you need to specify every single detail about them pretty much. More than what you do with default elements like divs and span, all this kind of stuff. Most popular pseudo elements are before and after. So in our example, when we add a before CSS element, it shows in here. Note that before was not before the div itself, but before the content inside this div. And the same thing applies to after. This is a very common mistake, assuming that these elements are rendered outside of the element. In fact, they are inside it, but before the content of this element or after the content of this element. So let's change our code to be after, because this, uh, this will be more like uh, how arrows and drop downs look like. So say here, after. And then we need the parts that we got from the arrow down, because this is a down arrow. We still don't see much, and again, this is because we are using a visual element. We need to say even what content it has. So if I do this, we can see our arrow appearing again. Look at this, there is really nothing special. All the Usual resetting, in line plot, transparent, setting a color, a size, and resetting the opposite direction. It's all very simple, really. Let's try to make it look pretty much like a, a real arrow. We we'll use the same color used for the border for the arrow, so that was 333. And it looks like if, if we just make it a little smaller and push it down, it should do the job. So, I'll not override the curves in here, just try. Yeah, this, this looks pretty much good. So now it's using the half EM. 
and because it happened to be a half, P, uh, a half EM it, it's already um, centered nicely um, I mean vertically cent centered nicely and let's see if we take this out what we get uh, we get it um, higher because we're taking this the space for the bottom one now we don't maybe we could also push it a little bit let's say two pixels or something to look more realistic and yeah we can play with the positioning a little bit more so I'll change this to just margin we'll add a bit of two pixels more to the right of course we don't need to push it up so I'll uh, keep the margin bottom to zero and then I'll add two pixels from the left as well and since it looks good I think that will be all enough we we'll remove these comments because we don't need them CSS pseudo elements do not need these comments to work they just work automatically and then for now I'll give you a few more tips first you know the padding of the drop down self we could have controlled the positioning of the arrow by controlling the right banning for example and the other tip is about how these uh, shortcut uh, or shorthand properties work for a long time I always failed to remember what are these four, uh, uh, four values are was ordered there in until I got to a very simple conclusion which is they always start from top and they always go clockwise so this is always top right bottom left going clockwise you know if you don't remember these ones as well these are always top and bottom and then right and left you can easily prove it like that So yeah, this was the last tip in this demo, and that's it. Now that we're done, let me tell you a little secret. I'm not a designer. Of course, uh, I know how to make pages look exactly like how the designer says they should, but I don't make the designs, so please forgive me any designer around here if I offend you in any way. And now we got to the end. Uh, this is pretty much my third YouTube video, so if you have any suggestions on how to improve things or if you just tell me how you feel about the video and the content and everything, that would be appreciated. Also, I'd be more than happy to get any questions around the video or any topic close to how it looks like or any other thing you may come to think of. I would also appreciate if you have any recommendations for what would be the topic for the next video because that's always something that I keep thinking about for a long time so you can contact me via my blog gurustop.net you can just mention me on twitter at miligi and you can email me via ng.miligi at gmail.com thank you very much and appreciate your time for watching